All right, Liam, tell us about your, who you are, man, what you do. Sure. Uh, my name is Liam Darmody, and I run revenue operations for a startup called HomeSnap, based out of Washington, D.C., just outside of D.C. area. And I've been here uh, at this company for two years. Um, prior to that, uh, working for various startups in the D.C. area over the last 20 years in an operational capacity, uh, marketing, sales, or customer operations. Sweet. Love it. Patrick. Yeah, that's me. Hi, Patrick Downs. I am the sales enablement training manager at PandaDoc. I'm a podcast host, mental health advocate, and uh, lots of other multi-hyphenate things. <laughs> Justin. Well, I uh, auditioned for Dick Tracy, and I didn't make it into the movie. But <laughs> cutting room floor. I am a futurist, and one of the ways I look at the future is the past. Um, I write books. I blog. Um, people call me a cyborg. I still bleed red, not blue, um, though it plays better with the audience. Um, yeah, I'm happy to be a friend of Five on Friday. I think my bio is Batman's exact bio uh, on your website, so thanks for that. But Justin Michael, uh, predict the future of sales, and uh, glad to be here. Awesome. All right, uh, Nishit, let's hand it over to you. Tell us uh, what you do, um, what you're building, and then uh, we'll, we'll jump right into kind of a, a presentation scenario and, and give you some feedback. Awesome. Um... Cool. So uh, thanks a lot for having me here, guys. Uh, I uh, I am Nishit. I graduated from Stanford this year uh, with my master's in computer science. Uh, prior to that, I did my undergrad from India, from IIT Kanpur, in CS as well. I uh, have spent the last four years working in machine learning research. So I've worked in computer vision, natural language processing, um, and all of that have been, uh, have, a, have publications and have been covered by NPR as well. Uh, over the last year or so uh, been working on multiple different ideas trying to toy around with things that we could uh, could could work on um, at like as startup ideas uh, quite fortunate that some things seem to click like over the last 5 months i've been working on sibyl and uh, trying to so, trying to solve what seems to be an important problem for the for the sales community and for account executives in particular and super excited to be working on this uh, so that's that's my uh, brief uh, background Awesome. And so today we want, do we want to do almost like a, a role play? Like, you know, Patrick or Justin is a, is a prospect and you're going to call into him and kind of explain the product. Is that kind of maybe the scenario? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And then would you prefer we kind of let the whole scenario end or would you like us to kind of interject feedback as, as you're going? Uh, I'd say it would be great to let it end uh, for like, uh, and, and then we'd, we'd love to get feedback from you after that. Okay, I think Justin would be a great um, prospect. You know, mm -hmm. he's uh, he's had lots of software demos, mm -hmm. and uh, he's always looking around the corner to see what's next. Mm -hmm. What what would the scenario be? Would Justin have received an email from you? Would he have been on your website? Like, how? What's the context? How does Justin know about you? Uh, yeah. So. Uh... Mostly uh, through uh, LinkedIn or an email reach out, mm -hmm. uh, and it would be, uh, and yeah, uh, uh, I can I can do the job of telling him about the product on the call. Yeah, yeah. And so right now, are you kind of in stealth beta? Like Justin would be kind of signing up for a, a beta product, or, or are you kind of open availability right now? Uh, so. I mean, we're not in stealth. Our website is live. Uh, we're <laughs> uh, my objective for the call is to even is to a get some feedback on what we're doing, and b uh, especially since uh, Justin has such uh, such an amazing background and thinks about the future of the uh, of of sales, and b uh, and more importantly to convince him to use the product in one of his own calls and um, and and then have like a follow-up call after he's had a chance to use it and see what value it can provide. Awesome. Okay, let's do it. Justin, you get to be the uh, the potential buyer. So uh, you should go ahead. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll do the role play here. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, hi, Justin. Uh, thanks a lot for taking out the time to uh, talk to me today. Uh, where, are you, where are you speaking from? Yeah, I live in uh, Santa Barbara, California. Um, you know, never, never land. Oh, wow. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah, I, I'm in California, too, uh, speaking from Mountain View. I miss Mountain so, View. I do. Got to get back up there. Oh, <laughs> oh, I see. I see. I, are you originally from the Bay Area or? Um... 
I've no, been but there. Before, before the new normal, I used to go to the mm-hmm. Bay Area every two weeks, really. I, mm-hmm. I have a lot of friends up there. Uh, our joke mm-hmm. is if you start a technology company, you can close all the business in a you know, 10-mile radius in San Francisco if you need to. <laughs> <laughs> amazing amazing uh yeah so um thanks a lot for taking out the time i'd love to uh, uh so i'd love to take the call forward in in the way that um i'll introduce myself uh we'll tell you more about what we're working on at sibyl would love to know more about you and how your sales process looks like um and uh and then we can dive into how sibyl could be the most useful for you um would want the call to end with uh, a potentially a, a, a two different outcomes. One would be uh, that uh, let's say we're we're not a we're not a great fit anyway. I'd love to have your uh, feedback, your advice on how to take the product forward. Since um, since since you have the uh, since I I believe you have the background and and like the breadth of experience to help us out. Uh, the other outcome could be that you uh, that. Um, uh, Hopefully, you're, you're excited about using the product, and I'd love for you to use it in one of your calls and get your feedback uh, after the call uh, with a, like a follow-up conversation as to how it went for you and whether it was useful. Does that sound good? Yeah, sounds great. Um, thank you. Awesome, awesome. Uh, yeah, so uh, so uh, so I'm Nishit. Uh, recently graduated from Stanford, and I'm working on Sybil um, uh, to try and bring emotional intelligence in video calls um, and. Uh, uh, we are we are very early in our journey, uh, but we do have a, a product out, and um, and we are and we are getting people uh, like salespeople to use it. I'm super excited to be talking to you about this. We'd love to know more about you and what what your journey looks like. Yeah, so um, I have a team of five. I have a SaaS product that helps train SDRs, and I'm trying to find VPs of sales who will talk to me. I'll be honest, since. Uh, the pandemic hit it's been hard to get them on the phone get them interested mm-hmm. so i mean there's a variety of challenges like how, what is um sybil solve like how, how could it help me i mean i look at thousands of these sales tools they all look the same um mm-hmm. about a nickel for every sales tool i probably make the number uh, but help me <laughs> Uh, absolutely, I absolutely empathize with it. When we were starting this, we were looking at like there's so many sales tools. Why are we even building one? Uh, <laughs> but then, uh, uh, and then, uh, well, we we figured that what we are building is uh, probably quite unique, and so uh, and and we'll we'll see uh, if we can actually make it big. So uh, I'd like to ask you if you've ever been in that scenario where you have, uh, where you or your salespeople have been in a call where you have multiple people, kind of like the call that we're having right now, um, and um, uh, and you you have you kind of have to sell your product or pitch your vision while you also have to take notes and you also have to kind of read the room and keep track of how everyone's reacting to what you're saying. Yeah, I'll be honest. I can show you. I have a. I'm gonna spill my coffee here, which I went and got with a mask on. Um, I, I use this technology for that. So call me <laughs> I got one of these too, you know, to make sure I'm okay. Uh, <laughs> but you can see it's not very complex. I mean, I got Salesforce, I got 25 solutions, but I'll, I'll tell you, I should, mm-hmm. like, I'm still on this thing because I, you know, I can't mm-hmm. keep it straight. So I, mm-hmm. you know, the millennials and the Gen Z, they make fun of me for my yellow pads that I mm-hmm. order on Amazon every two weeks. But how can you help me? Yeah. So, uh, so just to get a little more context about your use case. So essentially, once you write down these notes, uh, do you uh, do you then go and manually enter them into your CRM, uh, and or how does it look like? Well, I read this article about Marissa Meyer and she would do like a pad like this, write down 30 things. And if she got to the bottom, it was a fail. So basically after I'm mm-hmm. done with this technology, I'll pull it up, throw it into the circular file. Mm-hmm. So that's about it. I've, actually, I've got drawers full of these things and I have no idea what's on them. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's a huge wasted thing. Imagine this was computerized and I could search it again, but I, you know, I, I have no way of knowing what notes I took. It's a, it's a horrible mm-hmm. thing to admit. And, uh, and then how do you manage, um, like during the call, when, when let's say there are multiple stakeholders on the other side, uh, how do you manage kind of keeping track of how, how they are feeling or how they are, how they are reacting to basically what you are trying to sell? You know, I've been selling for 20 years. A lot of this stuff is just mm-hmm. gut instinct. I just, um, mm-hmm, I, mm-hmm. 
try to have a photogra photographic memory, but I'll tell you, I do forget. I drop the ball. I end up, you know, I end up asking prospects the same question a couple times. Sometimes I'll hold a little note file on my computer and I'll take notes, mm -hmm. but in the shuffle, once I have, you know, 10, 15 opportunities, uh, I've just become a really good listener. I'll be audio, I'll, you know, I'll be obvious. I, I won't even sometimes remember their name. It's, how bad, mm -hmm. it's a startling confession. And I'll just, hey, you know, it's, it's like personalization. It's like, mm -hmm. um, you know, hey, Amy, hey, fall back. You know, no name say, hey. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like, <laughs> I think we all face this when we have too many opportunities, too many people. Ted, mm -hmm. Ned, Bill, they're just, hey, you know, so yeah, there's a real gap here because some of my CRM files, then the reps don't figure out, fill out their file. I'm suddenly on a call with my team. Mm -hmm. Their data is bad. I don't really know what's going on. I can look at the LinkedIn profiles again, get reminded, but it definitely is a gap. Is that what you're trying to solve is that I have more information? Uh, yeah, so uh, so what we're trying to solve is uh, is kind of uh, fits neatly into uh, what you're describing. Essentially, uh, bringing a little more visibility into the emotional reactions and the changes in them through the call that uh, your prospects experience, uh, so that you don't have to necessarily take notes about, hey, when I said X, uh, you know, John got excited. Or, or, or this guy, Joe, he felt confused. And so, and so, so we can note all of that down for you and even prod you in real time that, uh, that you know what, uh, Joe got disengaged over the last 30 seconds. Maybe it's time you should ask her a question or, or bring her back into the conversation. So that's essentially what, uh, what Sybil is trying to do. It's just another set of eyes and ears for you on the video call. Uh, looking at uh, everyone on the call and just trying to map this out. If someone suddenly got skeptical when they were excited all along, that is not a great sign. And we want to catch that and tell you during or even after the call. Uh, yeah, so like right now, I kind of feel like uh, Francois is puzzled. Patrick mm -hmm. looks serene. Liam is smiling. Mm -hmm. uh, Amy is um, contemplative. But is this mm -hmm. sort of like, emotional AI, like it's reading people's faces and this creepy, like big brother, the prospect's going to be, you know, Hey, on minute seven, I noticed you looked concerned. So I wanted to follow up about your, I mean, so you wouldn't call it out necessarily, but I could start to see if people are disengaging and how, how do I really use it? You know, like it sounds like a flying car. Uh, I love it, but it just seems like, uh, you're selling me a UFO. <laughs> sure. Uh, so, uh, so I can tell you how you can use it. Uh, so essentially it's like, uh, so have you used other products? Like, um, I think there are quite a few meeting note taker products that appear on your call, like uh, there's Gong, there's Avoma and all of those stuff. So it's essentially the usage is similar. A bot will, like you can ask a bot to join the call. It will appear as another participant. You can tell uh, in case you want to record the meeting or you don't want to record the meeting, either way, a civil can still provide you insights. If you record the meeting, obviously we can provide you more insights even after the call and all of that. But if you don't, it can just take the input then and there and then throw it away once it has shown you what the insights are. So it could be that Amy is disengaged for uh, right now, but two minutes later, even the bot doesn't know what happened two minutes earlier because it has thrown away all of that data. So it's totally up to you and the prospect and what your, uh, your mutual contract looks like uh, regarding the, uh, regarding, uh, regarding the privacy uh, and uh, and yeah and also if you want you can use the insights in real time and get these things like in real time popping up or you or if you don't want that if you're uh, as you yourself mentioned that with 20 years of experience you've kind of gotten very attuned to listening to how everyone's reacting you can just have the insights after the call uh, in case there was some emotional reaction that you missed or if there was some vigorous nodding that let's say uh, liam did that that you missed on a certain thing and that relates to something you were saying you can kind of like have like a recap of that and look at that later in the, uh, after the call. I want to say first that your name is pronounced Nishit. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. I have worked mm -hmm. with India for so long, for 20 years. So um, number one, got to pronounce names right. Number two, there's a very famous made for TV movie by Sally Field called Sybil about a mm -hmm. woman with multiple personalities. Is that what the name comes from? Because if it is, it's genius. <laughs> so uh we discovered that about that movie after we named the product uh the, <laughs> the the name comes from uh sybil trelawney who was a professor in the harry potter series and she used ah. to like, predict the future 
Oh, I know. I have a five-year-old daughter, Professor Trelawney. She can tell me all about the um, the different spells. And um, so, yes, going back to the product though, and laser focusing, it'd be super helpful to know. Um, I'm always trying to figure out emotional intelligence and to improve the EQ. And it's harder than ever right now with all of us remote, because it's, it's I'm such a gut instinct creature, sitting and having coffee, looking someone in the eye, body mm -hmm. language, eye contact. We're all these two D screens. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? So it does seem like it'd be useful. How do I test it? You know, I mean, it seems like it's unproven. I mean, you're clearly a computer scientist. I'm not. How do we, how we prove it out? Like, how do I understand the return on investment? Like, I mean, I don't mean to jump ahead to the commercials. Like, what does it cost? Are you willing to pilot it with us since you're new? Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, uh, definitely. So, um, so, so right now we're at the stage where we are where we're getting um, or where we're trying to uh, trying to get um, our potential uh, customers to kind of use the uh, like use the product once uh, and then get feedback from them as to what they think adds value and what they think could add value in like the next few iterations. We're not charging for it right now uh, since since we don't believe that it's at a stage where we where we can uh, sell a full fledged solution and also guarantee uh, like uh, everything so i it's it's mostly iterative at this point um, what we're looking for essentially is like innovators early adopters people like you who can see like the where the future of sales is going and 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 get you guys to be a part of the process and help us uh, help us shape where this product ends up being a few months from now when we eventually do get to the point where we start selling to enterprises. Okay, so that makes sense to me. Is it a heavy lift to install it though? Do I need a lot of IT time? Like, is this going to take hours to set up? How, how does how does it give me the brass mm -hmm. tacks? Like, is it just a little plugin or extension? Can I run it over Zoom? Do I need special technology? Maybe like thirty seconds on that. Uh, no. It's it's super easy to install uh, or rather use. So right now uh, you can you can just tell us what time you want to set up a meeting for. We can set up a meeting and send you an invite, and the bot will automatically join the call. Uh, and you will have full control over the data just because we are setting we are setting up the meeting so that we can get the bot to join the call. Um, uh, eventually, um, it will be something that you can set up yourself once once we. Uh, have that's like have that sort of a deep integration with Zoom and Microsoft Teams, but right now um, you you can do that. You have uh, you have the data, you have the insights from the bot, and after the call, we'll reach out to you to get your feedback on how it felt. Uh, while we are at that, I would love to show you like some uh, some of like the sample insights that we gave to one of the people who uh, used our bot in one of the recent calls just a couple of days back. If if that's fine. Yeah, so are you familiar with a technology called fireflies.ai? Yeah, yeah, I am. <clears throat> How are you different than that? Sure. Um, so fireflies uh, provides you insights on the transcript and lets you search through keywords, lets, through, uh, lets you search through like um, basically uh, sn snippetize the conversation, look at what happened, listen to the conversation again. And it's it's great. I've used Fireflies myself in video calls, uh, but, but the thing is, Fireflies can only do so much. It provides you in some basic insights on the audio. Um, what we do is we we provide insights that are much much more contextual, uh, and we provide signals from both the audio and the video. So we don't just say that just because. Uh, let's say Liam did not say anything through the call doesn't mean that he was disengaged. It could just mean that he was deeply listening to the conversation and didn't have an objection to raise at that point. And we can track that because we are actually looking at their video feeds, even if they're muted out throughout the conversation. Um, yeah, uh, uh, I can uh, I can just show you uh, uh, just a sample of what we can what we can provide during and after the meeting. Thank you. Sorry, one of the guests brought on a little special guest of a cat there, and I got excited because uh, I noticed that cats actually emulate human faces the best. I found all these cat gifts. If you want to find a good one, you do like a, a cat acid trip is a good one for Giphy. Any animal, I mean, oh, no. no animals were hurt here, but just some of the um, some of the Burning Man animals on Giphy are good on a Friday. Um, sorry to divert the conversation. Okay, so I'm pretty sold in. No risk to me. It's a quick plug-in to my day-to-day. -day. 
and I would mm -hmm. love to hear more. Uh, yeah, so this is just a sample of um, of what this quick plugin can provide you. It's uh, just basic meeting health scores, like compared to your other meetings, how was this specific meeting in terms of the engagement level of your participants throughout the call about their positive outlook, which is mostly judged by their smiling and nodding their heads uh, or shaking their heads for that matter, um, and what the next steps were. Uh, you can also kind of, since we are kind of tracking these things as to who, when, when is someone engaged, when are they expressing a pain, uh, and when are they smiling, so we can give you insights on uh, on those things, like through the call with specific timestamps and snippets as to like, what were they most engaged with, what were they most happy with, essentially, uh, what were the segment of the call in, in which they were the most excited, uh, and, and so on, so that after the call, you can kind of structure your follow-up emails accordingly. You know what, Nasheed, I read this article in Gardner, which talked about emotional AI. Is that what this thing is? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I just wanted to see, because I read all this stuff and it, like, again, it sounds like a flying car. Or there's going to be a big bill. So very cool. Um, well, look at, you know, I'll, let me close in saying, you know, I, maybe you could send me some more info. Mm -hmm. but we can talk about it next year. Cause I, I just don't know. I'm trying to cut tools. I mean, I'm just not convinced there's an immediate application. I mean, I'll, I'll give you one more shot. Like, why should I plug this in now? Should I just, maybe it's a nice to have, maybe you want to prove it out with some other customers and then we could talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know, why, why me, why now? Yeah, so, um, so as you yourself mentioned that you're, uh, uh, that it gets very, uh, very hard to get as essentially uh, take notes since you are attuned to the participants. I feel like right now is a great time for you to have something like this. If nothing, for one meeting, you'll have much more contextual notes uh, after the call. Uh, and you can decide if you want to continue after that. Uh, All right, well done. End of, uh, <laughs> end of simulation. You did great, Nasheed. And uh, I sent you quite a bit of real life fire, right? Um, you know, it's too, it's too disruptive. I couldn't use it. It's going to be really pricey. I start asking about price before I even know what it is. Cause you've, mm -hmm. you've scared me with how advanced it is. So I start throwing the price objection. Mm -hmm. I start throwing up competitors. I can't figure it out. So I try to throw something up to try to try to throw you off. And what, isn't it like this other thing? Uh, mm -hmm. frankly, the two or three things I did are probably very common of what, what's going to mm -hmm. actually happen to you on the call. My first of all advice just in the beginning is um, you did a great job. It's the first way to go. I can't code a, a darn thing. I've, I've made code in Kiev and Seattle, sort of, you know, at the architect level, like it should do this and that, like um, uh, pseudocode. I'm finally learning what pseudocode is. For those on the phone, do you know about pseudocode? Pseudocode is like, it's a washing machine. The wheel turns. It's, a, it's the non-technical explanations of what the software does. My brother was explaining this to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and so was Joyce. So I can get you to a pseudocode agile level, but I can't program the pivotal tracker. But as far as like the code of running the sale, I thought your interlude in the beginning was maybe a little too formal. You asked for a little too much permission. Just mm -hmm. grab the ball and run mm -hmm. and maybe a more assumptive and say like leaders like you uh, are having a lot of trouble with their note taking and you know, they're feeling disconnected from the prospects challenged by frustrated with you just start I think framing up, teeing up the problems I'll have. And it's I like, see. Does, does that resonate? Did I miss any? And then mm -hmm. I think you go right into some more discovery. But if you poke mm -hmm. the wound and you highlight to me, because this is so disruptive, I and mean, otherwise they're like, what is it? It reads the face? Like, I mean, it's going to be like Zuckerberg talking to the government, you know? Mm -hmm. People are going to glaze over. I'm going to stop on my feedback. I thought you did a great job. I'd love to hear from the other panelists. Liam, Liam, uh, what, what were, what were you thinking? He, uh, Nasheed called you out. He said, you know, Liam hasn't said anything. So, you know, he's, <laughs> he said you were deep thought. Well, this is, this, I was, I was taking uh, a lot of notes. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I thought we were just doing the one-on-one -on -one with, with Justin for feedback. Uh, I thought it was great as well. Uh, I think it's a really cool concept and a really cool topic. Uh, you know, from a product standpoint, um, it's so easy for people to just stop paying attention on zoom. Uh, and in a room, you wouldn't do that, right? Like it's rude to do that, but you can get away with it on digital because there's other people in the room, et cetera. Um, and I think being what Justin said, being more confident in your solution is the fix to that problem. Right. And, and I think, you know, definitely, um, the, the fact finding piece, you know, sort of the solution sales piece where you're looking to figure out, you know, 
what is the pain point that they're having as it relates to this? How well do you feel your reps understand the tone or the pulse of the people that they're talking to, the clients that they're talking to? Have him sort of feed you some of the problems so that you get the buy-in um, for mm-hmm. him to say, okay, well, I'm, I'm curious. Like this guy now knows what my big problems are. What, what is Sybil going to do to solve those problems? Um, I think that, that would be something for sure. Um, and uh, just sort of that, that confidence level, right? Where it's like, you know, this is what we're building this is the problem we're trying to solve. This is why we think that it's going to be valuable to sales organizations. Uh, and, and let me tell you a little bit more and show you why um, is really, really good. Um, the other thing that I think uh, is uh, interesting is this is more of a feature request piece, but like giving um, people the ability to turn on which people they would want to, to sort of track because mm-hmm. You know, you might have a call with 10 people and the decision maker is two or three people, the VPs, et cetera. Uh, you want to make sure that those folks are kind of engaged and make sure that they're staying on board as well. So that was one feature request that popped out to me as I was thinking about it. Um, but overall, I mean, I think it's amazing, uh, you know, in terms of the, the solvability. Um, the other piece is when you were talking about the competitors, uh, like fireflies.ai. Um, having really bulletproof understandings of how you differentiate yourself from those competitors in the space is useful. Uh, if it sounds like from what I'm hearing, uh, you're providing real-time information as opposed to sort of a post-call summary, right? Like, is, is that is that accurate? Yeah. Um, so there are multiple. Uh, so I'd say that one aspect is the is that we are real time, and the other bigger aspect is that we are looking at both the video and the audio. And Fireflies only looks at the transcript in terms of analyzing stuff. Got it. So yeah, I mean, so for me, like one of the biggest differentiating points that you can make is that you know, you're looking at people's faces and you're extrapolating how interested they are, or how, you know, they're responding to the conversation, which is a lot harder to do, especially if I'm silent, right? If you've got people on a call that don't speak up much, you know, those other tools might not say anything about them, right? Um, so that gives you a leg up in that capacity. Uh, I think that's a really important thing to make sure you differentiate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Got it. Uh, just just to follow up on that. So, um, so, you, so you mentioned... I, I, I totally understand. Like, I, I think I should have started off on a more confident note. Uh, my fear was that if I started off with saying, hey, uh, I know these are sort of like some of the big problems you face and this is what we're trying to solve it. I felt like it should not turn into a monologue <clears throat> where I am essentially just pitching and they're not uh, like uh, interjecting or I'm not basically asking them for uh, what they want. So I want to get your uh, take on that as to how, how that plays out. Totally. Uh, it's a great, that's a great, great question. So I think one of the things that I noticed is that you, in the beginning of the call, you sort of set up the call to say, uh, you know, here's what I'm trying to accomplish over the course of this call. And then at the out, outcome, you'll either be interested in learning more or want to do something or you won't. That's sort of assumed, right? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, your goal and your objective is to, is to, is to make sure that this lead converts, right? Uh, mm-hmm. So I think that's an opportunity for you to sort of rephrase that uh, mm-hmm. sort of section and, and kind of use that time to say, what I'd like to do today is ask you a couple of questions about how your team currently operates and functions and some of the problems and pain points that you have, and then ask some questions that give you insight as to how much does this lead actually care about or, or need this type of solution. And if by asking those questions, you're not doing a monologue, you're mm-hmm. in fact turning it on to the, to the client, to the lead, Mm-hmm. and asking them to tell you. So it's their monologue. And then in telling you all those things, they're getting even more bought into the process, mm-hmm. ideally, right? Mm-hmm. That's what I think is important. So instead of, you know, I, I think silence can be a huge thing. It's why I'm in revenue operations and not sales, right? I talk too much. Uh, you know, good salespeople will just sort of say something and then listen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that is what I think you have an opportunity to do there. Thanks a lot. Yeah, awesome. Amy. Did, did you and or your cat have any um, insights? And this is a persistent ass cat, let me tell you. Like <laughs> she she gets up on my desk all day long and just like walks across all of my stuff and she's and she I'll have to throw her down like 20 times. Um, so, but uh, she's very type A, you know? So, um, so I'm, I apologize, I jumped on late. Um, I was uh, doing my day job and but I, so I missed the intro, so I don't really um, have a lot, obviously, to add there. Um, what I will say is, first off, kudos, because you took everything in stride really well. Um, mm-hmm. You weren't really phased by any of the questions that Justin was throwing at you. And those are going to be typical questions that you're going to get. Um, 
Matter of fact, I think that um, Justin was probably be very ni- was being very nice to you. Um, like he was leading the conversation a lot. Um, and just because he knows the industry and he knows, you know, the tech and everything. And um, I don't think that calls will typically flow that way, you know, in real life. I think you're probably mm-hmm. going to get a lot of like awkward silences and things mm-hmm. of that nature while people are trying to figure out like, what does this guy want? What does this company do? Um, so I think the whole, I wrote down like emotional AI. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's a really interesting topic. And I think that if you use that as a kind of a, um, a jump, jumping off point where mm-hmm. you ask them if they know what that even is. Okay. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be um, some people that are going to say yes. And they don't know because they, they're too proud to admit that they don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's going to be other people that, that absolutely do. They've done their research and their due diligence, and they really do understand what that is. But mm-hmm. you can come up with a, a series of questions to kind of figure out how much does this person really understand the technology behind it, mm-hmm. and, but keeping it very conversational. Because I think this is such a high level topic and it's such a, you know, uh, it's, it's just, it's on the edge of everything, right? Mm-hmm. It's just groundbreaking technology. Mm-hmm. And um one of the things that you can use to your benefit is the curiosity that drives that, um, mm-hmm. especially when you don't have necessarily solid next steps to find. Like you don't, you don't, I mean, I don't know how you price things yet. Um, you're probably still trying to figure a lot of that stuff out at this point. Um, and mm-hmm. then also like, um, you know, some of the questions that are going to come up, I think naturally are going to be things like, well, what do you do with the data once mm-hmm you've extrap- you know, extrapolated all this data from all these, all this facial recognition on all these calls that you're running for all these customers, what happens with that data? Mm-hmm. Is that going back to feed the AI and the, the machine learning algorithm to like further t- fine tune your technology? Because that's gonna be a big deal for some of these organizations that are gonna want to grow with your tech stack and make sure that, you know, mm-hmm. one, you know, when you say like you guys own the data and all of that, like all of that's yours. Well, we all know that you are guy. You guys are seeing the data on the back end system. Like it's mm-hmm. going somewhere. So use mm-hmm. that. Use things like that because that's going to be an objection that's going to come up. I think there's going to be some sales leaders that are going to be like, "Well, wait a second. Like, what are you doing with all of this data? You know that you're collecting mm-hmm. on us?" Because people are inherently like, I mean, I'm when we when all of the technology was first coming out about just recording calls in general mm-hmm. and being able to kind of give you the audio transcript from those calls and all of that. Like there were a lot of sales leaders that were like, I don't want that. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want like, like if my reps like just bombing on the phone call, I don't want to take that back to my VP and be like, my, my people suck. Mm-hmm. And I suck by default because they're my people mm-hmm. and I'm doing a crappy job training them. Mm-hmm. So you're going to, I think that when you've got a technology that's on the outskirts of what's new, you're going to mm-hmm. run into a lot of really random objections like that from sales mm-hmm. leaders because they mm-hmm. all think their shit doesn't sink, right? Mm-hmm. They're all the best of the best. And yeah, maybe we can improve in some ways, but you know, my way of doing things working for me now. Um, so cracking that through curiosity and like, who are you as a person? You know, what personality can you bring to a call? Um, mm-hmm that's going to be huge. So I feel like you answered everything really well, but I think that the one thing I was left kind of more curious about was how does this work? Like, wow, this is really interesting. And I think you could probably naturally drive more discovery calls just through talking about, you know, how the technology works and how it benefits them. Mm -hmm. Um, So prime example of that, um, if I'm on a, if I'm on a a demo call Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I've got my decision maker, but then she or he has a technical, you know, network security analyst, okay, who's not the, the guy in charge, right? He's not going to be this, the one that's going to sign the checks, but he's going to be the one that's going to implement the technology and then utilize it in his day-to-day job, right? And report back to that manager on how well it's working. Well, I'd rather know what that guy is thinking as he's watching this demo or whatever it is then, you know, the, the boss man, because mm-hmm. he's going to look to those people sometimes. So I think talking about that and bringing that up in, um, you know, when you're talking about use cases and things like that, 
don't say use case, talk about like, you know, if you're on a call, like give them an example, if you're on a call and you've got your, you know, your VP of sales or, you know, and then you've got these, the account executives over here, um, you know, I really want to see what the account executives are thinking like psychologically, because they're the ones that are actually going to be using the technology in most of their calls. Mm -hmm. And then I'll last, I'll say this, um, psych psychologists and therapists, like that's a target market for this technology. Like mm -hmm. most of their um, calls and counseling sessions are being done via Zoom mm -hmm. right now. Can you imagine if they had this technology to go back even after a call and to assess using AI, like how well that patient was really responding to the therapy session? Mm -hmm. I mean, like start to pick apart industries and how they would specifically use it to help them in their day jobs and then you know, create these industry verticals. And it's like, this is a benefit for this industry. This is a benefit for this industry. And then when you jump on calls with all of these different people, you're not just going after like sales teams and organizations that have 50,000 tools. You're going after hospitals, you're going after, you know, um, uh, psychologists, psychiatric offices. Um, what about like any sort of like um, rehab centers, you know, anything like that. Like that's prime example. I think you could you could really be very broad with this technology. So I would say don't tunnel vision yourself into this is a sales tool. Got it. That's that's my five my, my rant. Yeah. Oh, yes. that's that's a that's a ton of uh, amazing feedback. <laughs> yeah, I was trying. Amy's right. I was trying to kind of ease you into this stuff, you know, because you are you're jumping into a shark tank. You know, you're you're in the snake pit. There's this great. Oh man, Conan the Barbarian. It might have been the second one. Well, there's two. There's uh, Indiana Jones because I got the hat, <laughs> the Lost Ark, and they fall through the floor where the Ark is, and there's snakes everywhere. But I mean, us sales leaders, like we're nice at heart, but we have a really hard shell because we've just been sold five thousand pieces of technology. So we could do this call again, and I could be the—I uh, don't know if that's even the right term—the the big. So let me think. The bully with the juice, I think is fair from a baseball analogy, American baseball, just like some people, they just want to puff out their chest and be really dominant on these calls and they're going to treat you poorly. Um, but they're really just testing you and they're skeptical. So you got to look through it, look past it and be ready. Um, and they're going to object a lot. So who else has feedback? Uh, well, I was going to mention, so a couple of things I got in my notes as well. You know, we're talking about AI note taking and we're all looking at our pieces of paper. <laughs> yeah, like this. Like, yeah. <laughs> these are my notes from the past week. You know what I mean? And, and I, like, I like could I, use your technology, man. And I feel like I see a new note taking app and I'm not uh, equating your technology to a note taking app, but like yesterday I was on call and they were talking about how this note taking app was amazing for AEs because then people aren't having to double entry into Salesforce and they have, you know, their website is basically update Salesforce 10 times faster. That, that, that's all they focus on. So I think like when I look at your website, um, bring emotional intelligence to video calls. I think a few people have touched on like, what is emotional intelligence? And I know AI is sexy and there's lots of buzz around it, but I've read a lot of people describe it as essentially an assistant. So I think you could probably simplify your messaging to like, wouldn't you love to just have an assistant in your meeting? Cause that's, you know, cause I think AI, some people get excited and some people get scared. They're like, what is this? Like the Terminator? Like, I, I don't want an AI and, or it's, it's too yeah. complicated. And I think mm -hmm. at the beginning, um, I think framing the problem, like I think, you know, you were doing some rapport building. Um, I think, you know, a couple tips on that, you know, mm -hmm. take a quick look at Justin's LinkedIn profile, see what he's into. So there's some nuggets there. You could say, oh, I see, you know, you're doing this, you know, mm -hmm. you're having probably 10 calls a day. How are you managing that? Like a bit more contextual, but I think mm -hmm. framing the problem to help him basically tell you, here's all the problems I have. And then you can pick those up throughout the call would have been, better like the the beginning was a little bit I will say slightly awkward like the mm -hmm. rapport building was happening but it wasn't super smooth and that takes time mm -hmm. um, and you know I know you're here for the, the feedback so don't don't take that personally it's just you know some people they can they can get on a on a call and next thing you feel like you're talking to your uncle and some people you're like mm -hmm. when will this end like it's just not natural I, I also think the mm -hmm. the competitor the firefly piece that, that Justin brought up I would just smash that right at the beginning, you know, build some rapport. Hey, Justin, I see on LinkedIn and you're doing this and you've got this group and this book and, you know, I love your, your last cameo, you know, so really try and bring something like that in. 
and then say, here, here's what we're doing, right? We've got this assistant. We're just going to shave a ton of time. And, you know, you're probably thinking, oh, this is probably like Firefly. Like, just, just get those objections out right away because they're going to come up. Um, yeah, for sure. I, I would also say, um, you know, is, is first, is this, is this with Zoom or G Suite or meeting? Like, we'll work with all the, the technologies today. So uh, eventually it will. Today it works with Microsoft Teams only. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I think, you know, down the road, you might want to think about like which tool it's working with and who that target market is. Because, you know, what I've seen in the startup community, and Justin can probably attest to this, it's like mm -hmm. a G-suite, you know, landslide. Whereas in the corporate world, you know, Microsoft definitely is pretty strong. And then obviously Zoom's been really taking over. So, you know, if you're really strong with one product, then don't go after certain markets where they're not even using a tool you could you could integrate with. Mm -hmm. um, we we'll qualify that up front too, so you're not wasting their time or yours. Yep. yep. Well, and I think you, you can know? just build it into your messaging, right? Like if you know, yeah. if you know you're going after Microsoft Teams, it's probably more corporate, and so you know, build your messaging around that. And I think you know, to Amy's point, you know, when I look at your website, I would have, you know, like some use cases. So maybe, like she said, maybe psychologists, maybe maybe construction companies, maybe because you know, no taking the headache, but it's a different type of headache for everyone, and. All it is sometimes is simple nomenclature. So a doctor or a therapist or a salesperson, they may have a fundamentally the same problem, but if you're not speaking their language, they're like, yeah, I don't have that problem when really it's the same problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's my piece of advice. I did have a note on pricing. I personally love to just get it out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even if you call it like small, medium, large, whatever, even if it's a ballpark, even if today you're not sure what it is, I think some people, they don't, they don't want anything you know they don't want to have to guess what that is they'd love to just know like mm -hmm. i'm not taking this call if i don't know what it costs mm -hmm. makes sense yeah it makes it makes it uh, it's okay so sales people are in, people are inherently like i don't know distrustful of sales people but <laughs> um it would what doubles it is when you have a, a you're in a situation when you're like ah, like you can't really answer that price question it's just mm -hmm. going to be where even if you give them a range like a range is better than nothing. Um, and you can try to avoid that and get around it. Well, well, why is price important to you or some dumb question like that? Well, because they have to buy it, you know? Mm -hmm. So the money has to come from somewhere. It's yeah. not freaking rocket science. So mm -hmm. yeah, just come up with like a range of where you think you'll be. Um, and and that'll, that'll go a long way in this initial early stages of just kind of at least moving the conversation forward. Mm -hmm. But um, to Francois's point, I'll say this. Um, you know, personality is a big part of what we do too. Um, and you like, I, I don't know what your background is, but, mm -hmm. um, lean on that, like make sure that you, I mean, you, you obviously are a brilliant man and very well educated and you understand this technology and it's a very complicated type of technology to understand. So the one thing I'll say is like Francois was pointing out, you know, you know how you can, you can figure out ways to explain what emotional AI and all of that is in layman's terms. Mm -hmm. Like figure out cool like phrases that you can use that are very emotionally connective with your audience mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and like Bilal Baltry is doing that right now. He's doing this whole marketing thing on like how to take, you know, and basically describe what your product or solution is doing without even mentioning your product or solution. Like if you can do that and you can be like, boom, here's an emotional connection to my product and how it can help you. And by the way, I never said anything about my product. I just have this cool catchphrase that instantly resonates. Mm -hmm. um, that's, I think the emotional AI, like there's a really, because it's a wide open market right now. Like I think there's a, there's a strong place for that. Um, yeah. so, you know, don't like, so lean, like I would go back to the drawing board and just come up with like creative ways to talk about what it is that you do and also use your history and your background. Like what's your story, man? You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. people, people get sucked into that. So maybe not in discovery calls, but in your, um, you know, your social media, your, your, all of your kind of like your outward facing, um, process of educating the world on Sybil and emotional AI, like mm -hmm. use who you are a little bit too in that. And that will help you when you're on these discovery calls, because people are going to look you up too and be like, who's this dude I'm talking to, talking to today? Mm -hmm. you know, that, not all the time, but I guarantee you if they're a salesperson worth their salt, they'll do that. Mm -hmm. So 
that's just some advice there. And question, uh, Nishit, great point, Amy. Uh, so are you selling this primarily yourself right now? Just bootstrapping this company? Uh, so it's, um, so it's the three of us uh, co-founders um, and uh, uh, we're, yeah. So, so right now it's the three of us uh, and uh, in terms of like, I'm not the only one selling it. So there's uh, another co-founder of mine. So he's also involved, like he also gets on sales calls and he also kind of uh, tries to understand the market and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. I think what Amy said is, is really incredibly important. People, everything that's happening is, is this emotionally irrational creature. It's all storytelling, use cases and emotions. And then mm -hmm. the logic and the statistics. And I think that's the biggest thing we're missing now is we're in this era of you join the hot SaaS company, you master your deck, here's what to say on each slide, you master the demo. And it's just, you're regurgitating. It's like a walking brochure. We get on the call and we give them all these reasons, right? Mm -hmm. Storytelling is the key you know, mm -hmm. especially with disruptive tech. Here's how Absolutely. a customer used it. And here's the story of what it did before, after, and uh, tapping into that emotional place. Um, yeah, after the journey of reading 200 sales books and building my own methodology and training hundreds of reps, I just say, start there. There's a book called mm -hmm. What Great Salespeople Do. The reason mm -hmm. it's a radical book is there's this guy named Mike Bosworth, who's the godfather of solution selling. He coined the term. Well, he's, he trained millions of reps. Uh, Microsoft, mm -hmm. IBM, Oracle. He was the biggest trainer. He's retired now, living on the beach in the Luna Niguel, Mike Bosworth. Mm -hmm. Nobody really knows his name anymore, except, you know, old school people. His techniques are more mm -hmm. valid than ever. He, he created the whole solution selling process with the sequence of events and this whole linear box thing. And, and he reversed his thesis in this book. And he just basically says it's stories. It's the right brain. It's the mm -hmm. emotional side you know, mm -hmm. from the heart that, that gets people. And that's why pain and fear and deep emotions, even uh, the way that your emails look, if they're really dry mm -hmm. and markety and too ROI focused, that's good for an analyst. It's good to back up, you know, the why they buy, but it's not necessarily going to get the urgency because they mm -hmm. can just do nothing. Like this thing works great. I get them at Staples. Why change? <laughs> Makes yeah, sense. I, I, I feel that. Um, I think um, you know if you're just a small sales team, the the back end organization of like you know coming up with a really great process and, and way to sell is important. Um, but also just kind of just enjoying the ride, you know. I mean, it's not every day that you can that someone comes out and creates a groundbreaking product that's that's you know, and, and so use that, like be confident in that too. And I think moving forward, um, that'll help you on your calls as well if you can go in knowing like I'm a part of something that's groundbreaking and don't be mm -hmm. egotistical about it but like have some fun with it you know and joke around and I don't know you could even be creepy about you know come up with like some movie that has some AI like emotional AI like I don't know bring in like humor and and all of that I think because the more serious and rigid you are with a product like this the harder it is gonna be to, to kind of break through um, mm -hmm. whereas the more kind of spontaneous and emotional because you're talking about emotional AI and the more open yeah. you guys are as individuals, the mm -hmm. more it's going to help. Like, are you using it on this call? Uh, so not on this call. As I said, it works with Microsoft. Teams right now. <laughs> yeah. Get a Zoom one and yeah. play up the Sybil. So, you know, whenever I talk to Pied Pipe, sorry, Chili Piper, the calendar ring, I call mm -hmm. it Chili Pied Piper. Mm -hmm. It's Pied Piper from Silicon Valley. <laughs> you've, done, you've done it. Like, mm -hmm. give me the shirt. It's a trademark infringement. It makes them all laugh. But if you mm -hmm. literally are an AI emotional company and you're called Sybil and there's a movie called mm -hmm. Sybil, I'm not trying to make fun of a personality disorder because I know it's a very big thing. We have a mental health advocate here, Patrick Downs. It's a very serious thing. Mm -hmm. But it's also true that you've literally made a tech that predicts people's personalities. I mean, it's, it's kind of hilarious in another way. That's not Yeah, bad. <laughs> so true. You know, hey, you, um, I just thought of something that would be really good uh, for Sybil and just kind of building a use case. Find every sort of um, uh, Zoom webinar, like live webinar event or whatever that um, all of these different sales trainers and coaches are doing and volunteer your software to be a bot in that meeting. And then like use that like as a selling tool, be like, oh my gosh, look at all this incredible information and you know what's funny is I bet it would be hysterical as well because I bet some people are like just the like what they're doing when they don't realize they're being watched is 
hilarious. I'm sure it's like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like that would be, that would be a really good way to put you in front of a ton of people. Like they could, I mean, not necessarily say that they're sponsoring it, but like the way you could structure a sponsorship in that, in that realm is to say, I'm going to give you all the data from this, right? I'm going to mm -hmm. give you all of the facial recognition data that we, you know, collected during this webinar and during, during this event. And that's yours to do with what you will. I just want to be a part of it. And I want to mm -hmm. say I was a part of it. Mm -hmm. Guarantee you a lot of these guys will be like, yeah, why not, man? Like it's not hurting them at all. And it's kind of mm -hmm. like, it gives you a little bit of a shout out too. like what, even doing what you're doing with five on Friday, like maybe we could do another session or you can come on as like a, like a silent watcher or something and run your bot. Mm -hmm. And then we can use that afterwards. You know what I mean? And give you like, like all of that's going to help any mm -hmm. sort of like street cred that you can build within mm -hmm. the sales world. If that's your target demographic, mm -hmm. you know, it's all money. Yeah, that's Liam, what were you what were you saying in the chat? I was saying it'd be hilarious if this was like working on a Thursday night sales call <laughs> in mm -hmm. Zoom. Right. And see, you know, sort of seeing like all of the different reactions that uh, this software could pull out of that. I mean, it's different, right? But like that would be a really interesting use case applied. Um, I actually, unfortunately, I do have to I have to jump a little bit early for another call. But uh, Nishid, this was awesome. I really appreciated. Uh, the opportunity to hear about your idea and provide feedback and you can hit me up on LinkedIn if you ever have any other questions at all. Um, so thank you so much, Francois. Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Liam. Take care. Yeah, I, I like that idea, Amy, because I think getting in front of more people and having more people uh, test drive it is just going to give you better feedback. And ultimately, you know, then some of these people might be using it and actually like it. Um, mm -hmm. And then you're, you know, you're kind of subversively selling. Mm -hmm. yeah like you could what if you had like a bloopers um like outtake you know of like calls gone wrong kind of thing you know because I mean listen um we don't like one of the things that we've talked about with five on Friday is we don't take ourselves very seriously like we all have day jobs but what you see is what you get like I am just as goofy in my day jobs as I am like on social media or in like on any of these videos we've ever done um mm -hmm. and I think that you know, like we've talked about doing blooper reels, right? Like there's been times when we've lost our shit on these calls. And I think that if you tap into that too, it's going to be mm -hmm. like, it's just, I mean, it's going to be money because people are going to be like, oh, that's awesome. Like what this AI said about this, like these hilarious outtakes and you could turn that into just content. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that's a great idea. To, I, I, I like that idea. It'll put you in front of a lot of people. I like that idea, Amy, almost like a challenge, right? Like you could say, hey, can you can you beat our AI? So, you know, our Amy and Justin uh, think that, you know, they, they can beat the AI, but does the AI come back and actually nail, this is what Justin's facial, you know, recognition was doing. Justin wasn't able to trick the AI. So, you know, there's lots of fun things you could do just to create some content and get some eyeballs on, on what you're doing. Like, for sure. like, like wearing goggles, like wearing those goggles with the eyes that pop out, you know? <laughs> Uh, I totally rocked that out and see if I could trick your AI algorithm with those bad boys. No, I think, uh, I think you're on to something great. So kudos that's to great. you, man. I'm looking forward to seeing where you go with it. Yeah. Th thanks a lot. That's, that's, I think I, yeah, I, I personally hadn't thought of uh, using that as a way to generate content. I think that would be super interesting to put on, on our website as well. <laughs> yes. Definitely do it. I'd be, I'd be tuning in. Or you could even do it on like TikTok and stuff too. Like, I mean, you know, sky's the limit there. <laughs> Can you imagine like the AI's like, oh, that would be great. Uh, but I'm like super nerdy nerd. So any any final questions for us, Nishi? Uh no, I think I think this was this was super helpful. I, I got a ton of uh, great feedback. So I'm uh, glad for that. Um and, and I guess I would I would close just as I closed with Justin. I, if uh, if any of you want to use the product in your actual calls, just uh, just let me know, and I'll set it up. Awesome. Yeah, that would be awesome. I'd be down. Mm -hmm. And and you said right now it's with Teams. Yeah. Okay. And would you say you you've had a lot of people you've talked to who've said we're interested when it's ready with Zoom or Google Meet? Uh, yeah, I, I think I think uh, that objection with Zoom has been very common, and so we are actively developing uh, Zoom now, um, mm -hmm. uh, and that should be that should be weeks. Okay. Nice.
Great. Well, good luck with everything. Yeah. We'd like, love to see you back on here. Thanks for getting in the hospital. Thanks, thanks for uh, making time, <laughs> Justin and Amy. Um, and uh, have a great holiday break, guys. We're not going to be on uh, until yeah. after here. Miss you. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Bye, guys. Happy everything. Bye. See you soon. Bye -bye. Cheers.